guest of honor, the Executive Director of United Nations Women, Dr. Pumzile Mlambo Nuga, our distinguished guest, Dr. Stegomena Tex, the first female Executive Secretary of the Southern African Development Community, SADC, the Director General of Government Communication and Information Systems, the GCIS, and spokesperson of the Cabinet of South Africa, DG Kumla Williams, who is the host of today's engagement. Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, Malimongwe! Type in Ika Malama Kosikazi in the chat. That means let the name of women be glorified. It's about paying tribute to women and gratitude for the role that they have played. Happy Women's Month to all. The essence of today is to inform women, to empower women, and to enhance gender equality. I must hate to say that we welcome men in this platform. We refer to men who support the cause of women as progressive men. So all the progressive men are welcome in this platform. Every year in August, South Africa marks Women's Month. The country pays tribute to the more than 20,000 women who marched to the union buildings on the 9th of August, 1956, in protest against the extension of the past laws to women a system that was meant to control women even further and reduce women to passive beings at the mercy of men. In 2021, South Africa celebrates this Women's Month under the theme, Generation Equality, Realizing Women's Month for an Equal Future. The concept of Generation Equality is a global campaign and links South Africa to global efforts that are aimed at achieving gender equality by 2030. Women's Month is a tribute, not only to the thousands of women who marched on that day in 1956, but also a tribute to the pioneers of women's movement in South Africa. Dating back as early as 1913, when women like Charlotte Makaike led the way in establishing the African National Congress Women's League and encouraging women to engage in the struggle for freedom. Pioneers include C.C. Jainab and Amina Gu, who are amongst the leaders of the National Liberation League and Non-European United Front of the 1930s. The names of Ray Alexander Simmons, Elizabeth Mafikeng and Elizabeth Abrahams will always be associated with the struggles for women. In the 1940s, Amina Pahad, Khadija Christopher were amongst the first volunteers to occupy the site of the 1946, and they cannot go unnoticed, as they were there the passive resistance campaign in Umbilo Road in Durban. The year 2021 further marks the 150th anniversary of the birth of the liberation struggle heroine and human rights campaigner, Mama Charlotte Manya Makaege. As a result, the government of South Africa has themed the year 2021, the year of Charlotte Manya Makaege, realizing women's rights. Ladies and gentlemen, you are welcome to the Government Communication and Information System, GCIS, webinar in partnership with Brand South Africa and Binti Africa Connect. Without further ado, let us welcome the Executive Director of the United Nations Women, Dr. Pumzile Mlambonuka, to address us. But let me first tell you briefly about who Dr. Pumzile Mlambonuka is. Dr. Pumzile Mlambonuka is the United Nations Under Secretary General and Executive Director of UN Women. She was sworn into office on the 19th of August, 2013, 
and brings a wealth of information and expertise to this position, having devoted her career to ensuring that the issues of human rights, equality, and social justice are attended to. Dr. Mlabonuka has worked in government and civil society together with the private sector and was actively involved in the struggle to end apartheid in South Africa. From 2005 to 2008, she served as deputy president of South Africa, overseeing programs aimed at combating poverty and bringing advantages of a growing economy to the poor with a particular focus on women. Now let us hand over to the Dr. Pumzile Mlambonuga, Executive Director of United Nations, which is UN Women, to address us. Dear South Africa, Happy Women's Month. Thank you for participating in the Women's Month and for celebrating the achievements of women in this year of Charlotte Mabrake, who was a great leader, an organizer, an educator, and a woman who fought patriarchy, sexism, and racism when it was most intense. This year, we mark generation equality in the midst of a pandemic. It has become important for us to make sure that we don't only address the lingering issues on gender equality, but that also we look at how when we come out of the pandemic, women are not left behind. Women have been disproportionately affected by the pandemic. Two thirds of the job where they were lost in the pandemic were lost by women. Women also were flooded by unpaid care work. Women have no digital literacy, so they lost jobs. Women experience higher levels of gender-based violence. All these are the issues we have to address as we rebuild after the pandemic. I'd like to ask you to consider organizing or joining the different institutions that are addressing gender inequality. In South Africa, the South African government has joined Generation Equality. Generation Equality wants to accelerate the implementation of the Beijing Platform for Action, as well as the implementation of the program of SDGs. It also wants to be intergenerational and co-create with young people so that we have a future that takes into account younger people. We also want greater investments in the women's agenda. We also want to make sure that when we arrive on the other side, in five years, when we finish implementing generation equality, we have taken a huge leap forward. Yes, the situation is not what it should be, but we have options and things we can do to address the situation. I hope through your gathering today, you could find ways of collaborating with the South African government and take us forward. Thank you for your attention and thank you for being concerned about issues that affect women. If you do not do it, women will suffer. Men need to be part of this process. They are an important part of the answers we are seeking for in gender equality. Thank you and happy Women's Month. Thank you very much there to Dr. Pumzile Mlambo Nuka, who emphasized on three themes really to say that generation equality in the midst of the pandemic and that we need to rebuild after the pandemic and that we should not forget the, the other generations and we should bring youth in our efforts going forward. And finally, she has indicated that men need to be part of this process. And ladies and gentlemen, I believe that I speak on behalf 
of everyone who has worked with Umamu Pumzile Mlambo Nuka firsthand. Uh, she never said that you are too young or too junior in government to participate in strategic platforms. She would also she would allow you to shine uh, regardless of your position. And also um, she would make sure that in her international delegations, she made sure that there was gender representativity. And what we see is that by the time she went to the United Nations, she had already been practicing everything that she preaches on the ground in South Africa through the interactions that we have had with her, be it government, business, or civil society. So we are grateful to have had her as um, a leader and that we will, we will continue to be under her leadership in whatever form or shape in the future. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we just want to show you a video that um, shows that South African women are capable, not only South African women, but women as a whole are capable of being CEOs, are capable of driving change. Here is a video from Brand South Africa. So I'm a pediatric radiologist and the CEO of Envision a Deep AI. I have 20 years of experience working in public hospitals and I've also participated in outreach efforts um, throughout Africa. I think as Africans and specifically as South Africans, we know our problems more than anyone, right? And we can provide solutions to these problems. So funding would be required in order for us to be able to build more solutions um, and collaborating with other countries would be mutually beneficial. I am so proud to be a South African. We are so diverse. We have the talent. We have the perseverance. We have the tenacity. And most of all, as South Africans, we have the resilience. Indeed, today is about celebrating the resilience of women whom we call Imbogodo in South Africa. Watinda Bafazi, Watindi Mbogodo. You can type in there, Watinda Bafazi, Watindi Mbogodo, which means you strike a woman, you strike a rock. This really speaks, as um, I said, to the resilience that women have. Now, before we go to the next speaker, we are going to um, honor her by playing the anthem of the Southern African Development Community, which is SADC. Thereafter, I will introduce the speaker. So Dr. Tex has led and participated in a number of bilateral
multilateral, regional, as well as multilateral programs and negotiations. Her areas of expertise and experience include regional integration, social economic, politics, peace and security. It also includes trade, finance, investment and private sector development. As the executive secretary of the SADC, she successfully led the formulation of various policies and strategies. Dr. Dex, a native of Tanzania, started her career as a government officer in 1990 and served in various positions in a number of ministries. She has also worked as a research consultant in the Economic and Social Research Foundation in Tanzania. She has also worked as a chief executive officer for the Better Regulations Unit, overseeing the implementation of the Business Environment Strengthening Program of Tanzania. She acquired her doctoral Phil in International Development and an MPhil in Policy Management and Development Economics from the University of Tsukuba in Japan. She holds a Bachelor of Commerce in Finance attained at the University of Dar es Salaam and Diploma in Business Administration. Her Excellency Dr. Stegoma Tex, Stegomena Tex, please may you address us. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Program Director. And uh, may I recognize Dr. Pomize Malam Konguka, Executive Director of the United uh, Nations Women. I believe that uh, we are also with uh, the Honorable Minister of Information and Communication of the Republic of South Africa. May I recognize uh, her? Distinguished guests, representative from uh, various uh, media house, I believe they are with us. Ladies and gentlemen, I'll try to be within my 10 uh, minutes as much as I can. Let me begin by thanking the government of the Republic of South Africa and especially the Department of Government Communication and Information System for inviting me and in that regard, SADAC to this uh, very important event on empowering women and achieving gender equality. The 105th anniversary, as it was uh, indicated, of uh, Cholette Makete, and uh, 2020, 2021 being declared the year of uh, uh, Cholette Makete makes this event more special. The event provides uh, an opportunity to pay tribute to the generation of uh, women who the struggle have immensely contributed towards creating an enabling environment for women to prosper and serve as motivation for women to strive for gender equality, some of whom were referred to or recognized by the, direct, the program director. Ladies and gentlemen, women offer different perspectives and the interest in decision-making processes from their unique experiences to their unique needs and priorities that are often overlooked due to women's underrepresentation in political and the other decision-making positions. It is, however, encouraging to note that SADAC recognizes the important role of women in society and SADAC member states have been proactively working towards the equal representation of men and women in politics and decision-making positions at, dif at different uh, levels, such as cabinet, parliament, judiciary, public sector, as well as the private sector. The region's commitment to address women empowerment and ensure gender equality dates back 2097, when SADAC uh, heads of state and government through the SADAC Declaration on Gender and Development acknowledged that gender equality is fundamental, is a fundamental human right and committed to ensuring that equal representation of women and men in decision-making position at all levels becomes a reality and to full access by women too and the control of uh, productive resources and formal employment. It's one thing to be able to be part of the decision-making, but it's another thing to have uh, control on our resources. 
In this regard, SADC member state undertook to achieve at least 30% target of women in politics and decision-making structure by 2005. Three member states, namely South Africa, Mozambique, and Tanzania, reached this target with this, within the set uh, timelines, and I commend them, and I commend South Africa for organizing this event. In 2005, that was a uh, the target was to be by 2005, and only member states achieved that. In 2005, Sadaka heads of state and government raised the, the target for representation of women in politics and decision-making position to 50% in line with African Union targets. You can see, even though we could not achieve the 30%, all of us, but Sadaka continued to understand and to appreciate the role of women and the, the target was uh, raised. In 2008, SADAC members also adopted a protocol on gender and development that was revised in 2016. The framework for achieving gender parity in, in, in politi political and decision making position was also developed and approved in 2009 to strengthen the implementation of the protocol. Since the adoption of uh, the SADAC gender protocol, member states have made notable strides toward ensuring equal representation by women and men in political and decision-making position at various levels across uh, institutions, uh, and though pro progress has been uh, fluctuating. Uh, I will share my remarks. I have given some data in terms of uh, how do we fare in terms of uh, this uh, target uh, uh, by looking at the different member states. And uh, the progress has been con commendable but there is uh, still ground for improvement to reach the 50-50%. Overall, we can say that uh, we differ, but we are in between, uh, um, on average, about 30%, but some of the member states have managed to reach uh, between 30 and 50%. South Africa at cabinet level is 50% is and that is commendable. I'm nonetheless confident that um, uh, with the continued advocacy, demonstrated and commitment and the achievement made, this uh, the target of 50-50 is uh, doable. And uh, we need, uh, nonetheless, we need uh, to, uh, to redouble our efforts. I commend SADAC member state for the impressive progress and for working the talk. This notwithstanding, may I call upon SADAC member states and all stakeholders to, to sustain and accelerate efforts in empowering women in achieving gender equality. Ladies and gentlemen, one of the SADAC main objective is uh, to achieve sustainable development and economic growth, alleviate poverty, enhance the standard of living and the quality of life of uh, people of Southern Africa to support the socially disadvantaged through regional integration. It is evident that our women are the big, backbone of many African economies, including SADAC. While they play a key role in the economies of uh, more than 50% of poor population in the SADAC region are women, that is unfortunate. This is due to a number of reasons, including high interest rate, restrictive um, and uh, discriminatory laws, and a limited access to and a control of uh, productive uh, uh, resources. Economic of, um, empowerment of women is central to sustainable development and poverty eradication. Poverty eradication can be addressed meaningfully through programs that target women and they facilitate women economic independence and reduction of exploitation, feminization of poverty, discrimination, and the disregard of women fundamental human rights. It is uh, if you educate um, uh, a woman, educate, not only educate, educate and empower a, a woman, a man. Let me begin with a man. You educate and empower an individual. But if you educate and empower a woman, you educate and empower a nation. And that's the need to ensure that indeed we educate and empower women so as to have those uh, trickle down effects. To address this, SADAC uh, has engendered women uh, economic uh, empowerment and gender equality across all uh, sectors at regional and uh, national level. In 2019, SADAC adopted a regional multi-dimensional women economic empowerment program, 
which aims to promote uh, women economic empowerment and gender responsive uh, development. And a lot has been achieved. It's not uh, easy to provide the data, but a lot has been achieved and the information is available even on our website. Um, I also wish to indicate that information, communication and technology is among sectors where women are underrepresented. And such a gender gap also exists in this digital economy that is growing very, very fast globally. It is therefore important to strengthen women empowerment in the ICT sector by developing national and regional initiatives that foster participation of women and girls in the ICT sector. These are the issues that we need to interrogate and find strategies for addressing them while we continue to implement um, our women empowerment program, both at national and national level. I brought in the issue of ICT, taking into consideration the important role played by ICT during pandemics, and that we have seen what has been happening during uh, COVID, but also now under the digitization of economy, under the fourth industrialization uh, era. If we don't uh, uh, take a deliberate, deliberate effort to find our women are left behind, which is not our intention. May I therefore call member states to include women in the ongoing digitization initiatives at regional and national levels to improve the plight of women and gender equality. Ladies and gentlemen, it is also worth noting that uh, gains that uh, have been made, have been, gains that have been made um, face many challenges, such as increasing poverty, evolving forms of gender-based violence, HIV and AIDS, and more recently, the COVID-19 pandemic, which I had just uh, alluded to. The COVID-19 outbreak has demonstrated the inherent weakness in our efforts to empower women, especially in times of overwhelming pandemics and the calam calamities. According to, to the 2020 uh, policy brief for consultation, gender equality and leadership in global health and social workforce, we, we, women comprise of 70% of uh, the global health workforce, yet, they, are on, they only make 25% of the leadership position. At the management level, women are also only middle and low position with very few women in top management of the public service, parastatal and private sector. This has limited the decision-making machinery to full in, integrate women and girls needs during the period of COVID-19. Furthermore, according to the Gender Barometer 2021, even where women may have had a lower infection and mortality rate, they have been more affected because of the persistent gender inequalities that make them more vulnerable to violence, economic strength, lack of access to basic services, including primary health care. Evidence also shows that women have been most affected by the economic decline resulting from the pandemic. Women make up the majority of those uh, in Precautious work, including the informal sector, sex workers, domestic workers, migrant workers, who lost their livelihood during the hard lockdowns and the restricted movement of people. Women are also the majority of those in retail, food service, and hospitality sector, some of the industries that continue to face widespread business closure. The lockdown restrictions have once again highlighted the crisis of gender-based violence particularly intimate partner violence due to the service disruption and the closure women that experience violence have had less access to the needed support and care. Let us take the lessons learned and address the inherent weakness in empowering women and achieving gender parity. And I emphasize the inherent weakness. Sometimes we look at um, uh, we look on the surface without going deeper to, an to analyze what are the root causes. So inherent weaknesses are very important to be identified and addressed. As I conclude, allow me to once again express my appreciation for the invitation to deliver this, call, this keynote address at this important forum. That is continue, it's a continued demonstration of commitment by the government of South Africa to women empowerment and gender equality. We look upon uh, South Africa, you have done a lot and they will continue learning from uh, South Africa. May I also call upon all advocates of gender equality and women empowerment to continue doing so 
as we strive to achieve our aspiration for the 50-50 uh, gender parity as provided for in the SADAC gender parity framework. And, and the United will definitely do it and we definitely can. I wish the government of the Republic of South Africa all the best in this noble and important initiative and they wish you a successful forum. I'm very, very happy to be part of this initiative, noting that tomorrow is my last day as the Executive Secretary of SADAC, and I have already handed over. But we'll meet, and not necessarily in this capacity, but we'll meet in other work which we'll be doing together. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Stegomena Tex. And thank you for reminding us that gender equality is a fundamental human right. Thank you for also alluding to the fact that women must not only be involved in decision-making, however, they must also be involved in the control of resources. And thank you for what you have shared uh, in terms of the progress that has been made in the emancipation of women in SADC, however, leaving room for improvement. This is a clarion call for all of us who are listening to ensure that we make the necessary improvements as you have shared with us. Thank you for that. For those who have just joined us, we today are celebrating our matriarchs we are recognizing the resilience of the 20,000 women who marched in South Africa in 1956, and we are honoring their legacy that they left us. Thank you for joining us. We shall have a video that is calling you to South Africa in the month of November. Let's have a look. Join Africa's largest trade and investment fair in South Africa. Intra-African Trade Fair gives you access to more than 1,100 exhibitors and 10,000 visitors and buyers and more than 5,000 conference delegates, more than 55 countries. Participate in trade and investment deals worth 40 billion US dollars as business and government come together to explore business and networking opportunities at the International Exhibition. Brought to you by the African Export Import Bank and their premium partners. The IATF 2021 Transforming Africa. All roads are leading to South Africa in November. You are welcome to come to South Africa in November. Now, let me introduce our next speaker, Ms. Valerie Neinengo Sia. She's a journalist. She's passionate, she's a passionate advocate for women and children's rights. She has worked with the BBC and the United Nations and has co-established the interviews office in Tanzania. Ms. Valerie De Nengo Sia is, a house, is, is one of the 12 founder members of the Tanzania Media Women's Association, in short, TAMWA, which is a household name in seeking social justice for women and children. She's a current chairperson of the Tanzania Ending Child Marriage Network, a member of the 2014 Constitutional Assembly in Tanzania, and in 2015, the Canada High Commission in Tanzania awarded her championship for her advocacy against child um, early and enforced marriage. Valerie has ch three children, two binties and a son. Over to you, Madam Valerie. Thank you very much, uh, Meme. Um, I think you can all see me? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much um, for today. Um, let me begin uh, by thanking the government communication information system of South Africa and Brand South Africa for this opportunity and to thank Meme uh, for acknowledging Binti Africa Connect and making today happen. Thank you, Meme. Um, it is also a privilege to be in the presence of these great ladies who have spoken before me. Um, you only hear of these ladies from afar. So this is an opportunity. I've seen them, I've heard them speak. Um, and, been, and ladies, um, thank you. And if I may call you Binti, it's a great honor to be in your presence. Um, my greetings are also to all of you who are listening um, and tuning in. Thank you for the, taking the time to do so. 
And times have changed, we can't see each other, but we have the technology to make it happen. I believe we are all here because of the subject matter being close to our hearts. Thank you all. I'll just give a brief of Binti Africa Connect. This is a real connect for me. I met uh, my colleague or co-founder of Binti Africa Connect in 2010 in Iraq, and we kept in touch on and off as most people do who have a connection. And then I met Victoria in 2013 in Tanzania, a, gradu a graduate ready to intern and undeterred by being told there'll be no salary. And then I met Horden in Somalia in 2019. She had an interest in what was happening in Africa, having been brought up in England. As an activist, I have attended meetings and met passionate, sincere, and determined ladies, all in the quest of the Africa women and girls want. After we leave these meetings, I hear no more of Senegal or Burkina Faso or DCR or DR Congo, or Misri, Egypt. Then next I hear of Liberia has a woman president called Salif. And I asked, how did she do it? What can I learn? I've always felt that newspapers did not always give me what I want as regards to Bintis. So one day I called Nono and I told her, oh, and it was during COVID where we have to be very, very creative. And um, she was distributing food to the venerables. And I told her, um, why don't we create a communication platform where we can put a song, tell a story, ask for help and read about what other Bintis are doing in this beautiful continent of ours. Now, Nono is very respectful. So she goes, brilliant. Yes, Sisval, let's do it. So I'm mature. Nono is a bit less so. We needed daughters. And I call Victoria and I tell her of this idea. Please join me. She's respectful too. And she says, yes, mama. Next, I go to Horden. Please, Horden. And she says, yes, Habo. Habo is auntie in Somali. Nono actually tried someone in Lesotho, but she couldn't get her. It did not work. So we were four, four binties of Africa, and we divided the continent accordingly. That is the story behind Binti Africa Connect. I'm sure my co-founders who are here today will also um, tell theirs. Now, can I ask uh, uh, Ms. Meme to put on um, the PowerPoint about Binti Africa and what we do? Over to you, Meme. Thank you. Uh, the first one. Um, can we start with the first one, please? Thank you. All right. Um, this is Binti Africa Connect, and that is our logo. We have that Binti holding hands. That means we are connecting. The second one, please. Right. Uh, Binti is um, uh, Swahili and Arabic for maybe daughter or girl. And Binti Africa Connect is an online publication at the moment and soon to be an organization. So we say Binti means girl. So the vision is to inform and connect the daughters, the women and girls of Africa, so that together we can have that resounding voice. The previous speakers spoke of the challenges we have uh, and we have had some successes. So how do we get this to know, to let each other know? So we believe that life is an ongoing process and we can always learn from each other. So we go by this African proverb, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. So we believe that this uh, Binti Africa Connect will bring us together and through the power of unity, we'll make a sounding voice towards the Africa we want. And um, you can get all our editions on our platform. And here are the co-founders. Um, we have Horden. Um, Musa Ahmed, she is uh, the Northern Horn of Africa editor. Um, she is, um, I think you can read, she is um, 
graduate of the School of Orientals and African Studies from the United Kingdom, and she is from Somalia. Then we have uh, Victoria Grace. She is the co-founder and editor of East and Central Africa. We have uh, Nono Dihemo. She is Southern Africa. And then there is myself. The next one, please. Our vision is to be their platform for Africa's ability to empower, inspire, and motivate each other. So that when you are looking to be inspired, you go to Binti Africa Connect. And our mission is to highlight issues, stories, contributions of women and girls by connecting and informing. And through the newsletter, fostering stronger collaborative networks towards the Africa women and girls want. So that way, through this newsletter, we see us going that way. Our values are values that are inherent in the AU in SADC, that of respect for each other, um, being a, uh, respecting and acknowledging the diversity and inclusivity of our societies and the, and the differences that we have that bring us all together. Fairness to each other and to our readers, creativity to advance the interest of our readers, respect of personal responsibility for our actions and our ability to admit mistakes and the courage to persist in adversity to achieve BAC's Binti Africa's gold and to promote the advancement of each other through the advancement of Binti Africa Connect and through the advancement of women and girls of the African continent. We aim to be relevant, reliable and valued, a resource on Africa's women and girls and on their issues. And we hope and believe we would want to create interconnectivity among African Bintis. And as an end goal, of course, to create a Pan-African Bintis organization. Next one, please. Our areas, we have East and Central, we are four of us. So we divided Africa accordingly. East and Central, Horn and the North, South, um, West and Central. So those are areas. And as you can see, Africa is huge. We have more than 50 countries, but we do try in the various editions we have had since um, February this year to make sure we are representative of the women and girls of our continent. Next one, please. Um, the issues that we cover are around socioeconomic, political, and cultural. So these are there. Uh, both uh, Madame Pumzile and, um, and Dr. Stenogoma both spoke of 50-50, of justice, of empowering, of our rights. So all those are issues that we speak of in different forms, not in the forms that you'll see here, but in the forms you'll see through our editions. And the next one, please. So we have um, about five sections, I think. The first one is Binti highlights. These are stories of the countries of the continent. They showcase the different areas that Binti Africa Connect highlights in a bid to inform and connect. Um, I think one of my stories, my best stories is the one I've put right at the top. Um, this is the speaker of the parliament, the National Assembly of Children of the Gambia. Um, and she actually told the, the media that you don't seem to cover everything. You cover only the negative. I think there are more stories to tell about women and children. So she is, um, that's why she's right there on top because she told the media and she is a child woman speaker. But then you'll see we cover um, different issues of what women and girls are doing in the four areas that we cover. The four areas, when we talk of political, social, economic, and cultural issues, are issues that affect all our lives and in different forms. And the stories we tell are the sad ones that empower us to want the change and the good ones that inspire us to say, if it is happening in Sierra Leone, then maybe perhaps it can also, I can always also make it happen, for example, in Tanzania. 
Africa Highlights looks at continental stories at the Africa scene in general. So we'll find that reports, even the report, recent report of SADC of the gender barometer on the situation under COVID-19, we have it in our next issue. But it highlights things about Africa, but also reports that are given either by the um, AU, SADC, East African community, COMESA, or the African Development Bank, and other African bodies concerning women, concerning gender equality, concerning economics that feature women or direct or concern women. So that is what ha Africa Highlights does. Next one, please. Then we have uh, a page of profiles. We call this the binti of the month. We celebrate the bintis of each, of each region. Um, there is um, the binti in, from Gambia, uh, Sawiwa, who um, is an advocate against gender-based violence and especially child marriage and FGM in the Gambia. So she is one of them. Of course, uh, Binti Ngozi made history being the director general of the World Trade Organization, the first African. She wasn't the first woman, she was the first African. So we have celebrated her. And of course, I come from Tanzania. Having a woman president is something to celebrate. She was also featured in our Binti of the month. But then we also feature organizations, and this is showcasing the different organizations around the country. Subscribers of uh, Binti Africa, Binti Africa Connect, will be able to know which organizations are where, but they will also learn of what different organizations are doing around Africa. We have a Warner from Ethiopia, then we have Haya Masri from Egypt, we have Firmnet which is an intercontinental Africa uh, development and communication network. So all these are featured and more. When you go there, you will find them. And in all editions, there are different ones profiling the different organizations that Africa has. And as we go on, there'll be more and more. The next one, please. Then Africa has a diverse arts and culture. We have songs to sing, poems to talk of. But we have materials to showcase. We have um, styles to showcase. So we celebrate what Bintis are doing in the continent. And those who are outside showcasing what Africa has to show. So this is where we show what we have. Uh, we have uh, Yaa Gyasi with Homecoming. Her book highlights slavery and how it does to those who went across and those who, who, who remained. But we also have the styles, but we also have pottery. We also have uh, singers. Um, in one edition, we have a Tuera girl who is a guitarist. She's the first. Her father actually told her she'd be better off herding the cows, but she's there. Then the last part of um, Binti Africa Connect is the notice board. This is where you get informed about what is happening, what has happened, and what is about to happen. And this is where we also put to notice the Bintis that have finished their journeys on Earth and are on their onward journey. But it is also a place that would put to you a place where you will be able to put whatever you want to tell other Bintis. What do you want to tell them? Do you want them to join you in an action? Or do you have a seminar or training that is going to take place? So this is where our notice board is. Next one. And um, since we started in February, Bintis and gentlemen have been coming back and telling us that to congratulate us, what we have done. Um, to guide us to suggest that you need to do this and this. So we all know, unless you are told sometimes you are doing this right or wrong, you won't make the corrections that are needed. So all of you who are here, all of you who are going to uh, subscribe, tell us and we'll take it on board because the issue is getting the 
the issues of women in all the spheres here so that in the process we empower and inspire each other as we see the journeys we have gone through. While we get the figures, we also get the good parts and the sad parts, read about them. And this is Binti Africa Connect. We'll be informing you and connecting you to all the other Bintis of Africa. The next one. And this is why I come and say thank you for your time and for listening. And please go to our website, www.bintiafricaconnect.org. Over to you, Meme. Thank you. Thank you very much, Madam Valerie. Thank you for firstly bringing the girl child into the picture. Uh, thank you for also creating a platform that showcases South Africa's, uh, sorry, Africa's offering, uh, I beg your pardon, and also a platform where others can connect and be inspired. We salute the work that you are doing for the continent. Now, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we welcome those who've joined us. I see more and more people have joined us since we started. I also wish to recognize uh, Sibondi Lema Vimbela, who's joining us from the SADC Secretariat in Botswana. Thank you uh, for having joined us from the beginning. We recognize you. Ladies and gentlemen, your host for today is the GCIS, which is the government information, the government communication information system. And it is headed by DG Pumla Williams, who is going to address us later in the program. This is a strategic unit in the presidency that proactively communicates with the public about government policies, about government plans, programs, and achievements. And it ensures that there is constant flow of information between government and its citizens. And today, what the GCIS is aiming for is to create a platform for various stakeholders and the media to be able to exchange information on empowering women and achieving gender equality in order to achieve an inclusive growth across all the sectors. So this is um, evidenced by the nature of the speakers that we have today, because it is aimed at creating an African webinar that aims to inform, empower, uh, women and to also enhance gender equality. Now, let us move on with our program, swiftly so, and welcome our next speaker, who has worked in hardship countries, ladies and gentlemen. Um, she, she, she has used her strength and she has used her talent to ensure that she raises awareness uh, through Binti publication, uh, giving through all the trials that she has gone through. This is none other than Miss Mabakaro Nono Dihemo. She holds a master's degree in human rights, um, law, and democratization in Africa from the University of Pretoria. Ms. Mabakaro Nono Dihemo has worked at the South African Human Rights Commission and the constitutional affairs in South Africa. She has spent 18 years working for the United Nations in conflict and post-conflict countries, including Liberia, Iraq, and Afghanistan, where she promoted the protection of human minority and women's rights. Throughout her professional career, Mabakaro has focused in particular on gender and women's rights issues, including approaches and techniques to address these. Let us have remarks from Ms. Dihem. Uh, many thanks. Good afternoon, um, everyone. Program Director, Ms. Pumela Salela, UK Country Heads and uh, Brent South Africa. Dr. Pumzilam Lambonuka, my colleague and executive director of uh, the UN Women. Doc Dr. Stegomena, tax executive secretary of uh, the South African Development Community, SADC. Ms. Pumla Williams, the director of general, the di sorry, the director general of uh, GCIS and uh, cabinet spokesperson of South Africa. Ms. Valerie Soka, co-founder and West, West Africa editor. 
Ms. Horan Musa Ahmed, Binti Africa co-founder and uh, the Horn of Africa editor. Ms. Uh, Victoria Rowan, Binti Africa co-founder and uh, East Central um, Africa editor. Ladies and gentlemen, colleagues, I would like to thank the South African government for providing the opportunity to be celebrating Women's Month, recognizing the remarkable Binti or daughter of the soil, of the soil Ms. Charlotte Makaike, and also for recognizing Binti Africa. I'm delighted to be sharing the platform with all these remarkable women today. As Sis Valerie mentioned, we both met in Iraq in 2010, where I, was, um, where I served for about 11 years, first as a constitutional expert, political affairs officer, and gender advisor. We maintained contact and continue to discuss issues of women in Africa. That's what I call a connection. We used to have what we call African sessions. The idea of having an intercontinent, intercontinental newsletter was quite appealing to me when we discussed it last year um, in the middle of the COVID-19. It reminded me of my tenure in Liberia, where I worked with women from diverse backgrounds on social issues and their participation in political life. I have seen it all, <laughs> poverty, resilience, and the strength of women, and the need for connectivity. For a binti in Liberia to know what the other bintis are doing in other parts of the continent is an inspiration. I was also fortunate to travel the entire West Africa by road in the year 2000, connecting and interacting with women, discussing their concerns and, and you know, knowing what women are going through in the rural parts of, of West Africa. And the idea to showcase, to showcase Binti work, as I mentioned, was quite interesting to me because of the, the experience that I have in, uh, in Africa and knowledge is power and sharing experience, showcasing, so showcasing culture and learning of others' challenges as well as their successes is an inspiration. I readily ac accepted the proposal um, from uh, Sis Valerie to be a Binti editor and to cover the Southern region because of my passion in human rights, gender equality, women's participation in political and peace processes, and having lived in Ghana and uh, Liberia, where I worked as well, I realized the significance of sharing information. For example, how the ordinary women in the remote villages, in the markets of the DRC would benefit from learning about the other daughters in Somalia, for example, how, how um, the first um, Somalian woman ran for presidency. I agreed to be part of Binti because I saw the op opportunity for us to connect market women in Ghana with fashion icons in Southern Africa, to share fashion ideas and strengthen on their pos positive trademarks. When we discussed this um, idea, we agreed that we will showcase this every month rather than waiting. And we continue to do that. And so here we are, showcasing a connection and calling for you all to join us. And as you all know, the Binti Africa Connect is at the moment a monthly newsletter. It's, it spots, as Sis Valerie highlighted, it spotlights political, cultural, economic, and social issues that Bintis are involved in around our beautiful and diverse continent. I cover stories from Southern Africa, Zambia, Zimbabwe, Botswana, Namibia, Mozambique, Angola, Swaziland, Malawi, and Lesotho. This is an area that is rich with stories of women who have achieved and of course, there are also stories of women facing challenges. Since Binti Africa's inception, I've covered stories of victims and survivors of sexual violence and their road to recovery. In particular, the story of the South African net bank running athlete, Ntombisetsu Mfunzi, a rape victim who got over such an ordeal and now supports other victims. And interestingly, 
She also gives talks to convicted rapists. She's a source of hope. I recently highlighted the Prime Minister of Namibia, Mrs. Sarah Kangungelwa, who emphasized that for everyone to benefit, gender equality must be extended to all sectors of society, as Dr. Pumzile also um, highlighted. And I believe that we cannot achieve gender equality if we do not involve men. I always stress that men, we need men. We should discuss these issues with men. If we don't talk to, if we don't talk to men, how are we going to achieve gender equality? How are we going to address our concerns? They, you know, they are also the problem. So we need men who are our our, our, our allies, we need those male champions to address some of these issues. Southern Africa is rich with brave women, women activists who fought in the liberation struggle and seasoned politicians who are role models. In my focus on culture, I also spotlighted, uh, you know, uh, fashion, fashionistas, we call them fashionistas, a lady from Lesotho who is, uh, you can, if you go back to our, um, if you go to our Vinci ed editions, you can see some of the, the, the fashion icons that we, we spotlighted who are focusing on African fabrics. Uh, the passing on of uh, the South African jazz maestros, Bongi Likumalu, also featured prominently on our notice boards. And so too, a video of some of her songs. So I'm fortunate that in my area of coverage, there is the South African Development Corporation. And I'm glad that uh, we have Dr. Stegomena Tex um, here today, you know? And uh, as, she as she already mentioned, um, the important protocols and barometers adopted by the SADC which has been instrumental in leading on gender equality in Southern Africa and has been a, a beacon uh, to the rest of Africa in raising the, the voices and amplifying women's voices. Just recently, as uh, she alluded to, um, SADC um, noted the impact of COVID-19 on women. This underscored the, um, the hashtag vaccine gender justice hashtag voice and uh, choice in the time of COVID-19 campaign. And uh, they launched the SADC 13th Gender Protocol Barometer, which reflects slow progress in advancing women's rights in Southern Africa develop development um, community. With SADC in my area, I will not lack stories on the strides that painters are making on the challenges that need to be tackled. We are fortunate that this webinar has taken place and that launched the Binti Africa Connect publication. I've learned from each edition what goes on, the similar challenges and the different approaches. I see the opportunity of someone in South Africa reading and seeing how the same problem was tackled in Tunisia, for example. I see this as, as an opportunity to tell our fellow Binters that here is a platform for all of us to empower and inspire through Binti Africa Connect. While we wait for the next conference to inform of what our country has done, Binti Africa Connect will do that for you every month. I look forward to Binters sending in their stories and organizations profiling their work so that elsewhere in our continent they can connect. Each of the co-founder, each of the co-founders is currently working on having a directory um, of different, a directory of the different women organizations in their areas. This will be a resource tool for anyone needing to connect. We have space on our Notice board for advertisements. Please see Binzi Africa Connect as the platform where your information will reach all parts of the continent. Thank you very much for listening. Um, and we see today as well, today as an opportunity to invite you to join us in empowering 
and inspiring each other on this communication platform. What you need to do is just visit our website and subscribe. If we don't want, if, you, if we want to go far, we go together as Sis Valerie pointed out. And together we will reach the Africa women and girls. Yeah, we will reach all the women and girls in the continent. Thank you very much for listening to me. Thank you very much, Madam Wano. We can see and we can feel your passion uh, in this regard. Thank you for creating a platform that serves as a voice for women, uh, a platform that allows uh, those who are voiceless to be heard. And we want to thank you for being the voice for the voiceless and also an advocate or being an advocate of gender equality. Thank you so much. Thank you. We are grateful that we still have the participants uh, because this webinar would not be successful without you as the participant. And I just want to also um, acknowledge one of the participants, Ms. Nozipo Klogwana, who is playing quite a big role in terms of representing women in the arts and culture sector. This is what we're about. We're about um, being the voice for the voiceless, representing women, and ensuring that women are connected. I mean, one of the things that strikes me about the 1956 March is that Number one, women were united and they were united across the races in South Africa. This is a fact that many people do not know that that much took place across the racial lines. And so there was unity amongst women, unified by the fact that they are women. And number two, what also strikes me is that it, it was the discipline and the order and the decorum in which the women of 1956 held their march. They were not violent, they stood in silence, and they made sure that they brought their, if I may call it, uh, grievances to the fore without causing any havoc. And when we talk about learning from the generations before us, these are some of the lessons that we need to learn. Uh, these are some of the values that we need to take forward, even to the next generation. Now, let us go to the next uh, item of our program, which is going to be questions and answers from the audience. Please type your questions and answers in the Q&A section. Allow me to kick off this question and answer session by asking a question to Madame Nono. Madame Nono, can I ask you this question? Because I'm looking at the areas in which you have worked in. And 2020, um, as the young people say, made us woke in terms of mental health. Please, can you share with us how have you dealt with your own mental health when you were in these hardship countries and situations? So, oh, apologies, technology. Uh, thank you, Madam uh, Program Director. Um, actually, um, as soon as we, we had the news that you know COVID was going to spread. Um, we were evacuated. Um, the mission had to reduce the footprint. So I spent most of my time in South Africa. I was actually telecommuting, um, working from home. Um, I must say it was it was very, very frustrating uh, during the lockdown, as we all know. Um, but uh, um, Fortunately, I had I have I had all the resources um, at home, so um, it was challenging, but I managed to uh, uh, to survive, and I survived the the pandemic. Um, yeah, um, so I I was at home, um, and I was doing physical training as um, I usually go to the gym, but I had um, I had to buy. Uh, immediately he gets myself a spinning bike, uh, which helped me my mental health um, because I wouldn't have survived without um, doing any physical training. So yeah, I, it was very helpful. Um, it was, I think it was 
a very uh, emotional period for all of us because we lost uh, the loved ones, we lost friends, and uh, we. It was it was cold. It was during the winter, and um, it was not easy. I must say, but I managed to uh, to get the work done uh, as I had to. Thank you. I can imagine. I think the one thing that is common amongst all of us is that in the year 2020, uh, we have all been either affected or infected by uh, COVID-19. Uh, there is not a single one of us who cannot say that they have not been affected by the COVID pandemic. Now, I'm looking into the chat and I see Sandikazi is very active there. Um, I'm wondering if we should not um, give her an opportunity to, you know, make a clarion call for other women, um, you know, to support other women. Neme, can we allow Sandy Gazi? I see she's very active in the chat. And anyone else who is able to suggest to us, what is it that women should do to make sure that women's programs are taken forward. We want what we'll call in South Africa, Mama Action. People are going to say, this is what we need to do in order to move the cause of women forward. Let's type that in the chat. Come up with suggestions, please. Um, thank you. Um, Sandy Gazi, can we let you speak a bit? Hello. Yes, we hear you. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Please go ahead. Very briefly. Punchy, punchy to the point. I just want to invite all other creatives in South Africa, especially women creatives. There is a platform that is called Stage 32. This is an international platform where you meet with the executives worldwide. If you have any product, if you are willing to grow as a creator, that is the platform that you need to be. And if you have a chance that you want to belong, if you can just type in a Google Screenwriter Safari, then you will see what is happening with that platform. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much. May I ask you to type up what you've just shared with us in the chat as the line was not very clear. We heard some parts of it, but um, there may be some parts that we have uh, lost in that regard. I see um, Madame Nono says she also kept busy by street distributing food parcels in the country. She also partnered with the Nelson Mandela Foundation to feed communities affected by COVID-19. Now, um, Ms. Nozi Po is asking if she can get a chance to comment. Um, Meme, shall we allow that and then move on to the next section of our program? Shall we allow Ms. Nozi Po to make a comment? Then we move on. Hey, hello. Okay. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you clearly, Ms. Nozi Po. Thank you. Oh. Okay, thank you so much, Sis Pumela. And I can't uh, concur more with the previous speaker. I think what we need more is uh, women. We've got so many organizations like scattered. If we can have an umbrella body so that everybody can feed on each other. And every day, new organizations are being formed, reinventing the wheel. I think we've got everything that we need in place. It's a matter of connecting and supporting each other. Thank you. Wonderful. Spoken like a true leader, fastened to the point. I think what we should also recognize is that the platform has been provided by the GCIS through this webinar. Nothing is stopping you from chatting amongst each other. Uh, so please, please do chat amongst each other. The chat is open. You are welcome. Now we have um, a question from Zoti Jimshana. Uh, she is addressing it to Dr. Noga. So I'm going to ask um, the panelists who have worked in the United Nations to answer this question. 
Um, she says, as someone who's been part of the Unite uh, UN Women since 2013, how do we go about achieving technology and innovation for gender equality? So can we have any of the speakers from who've, who've had some working with the United Nations or even Her Excellency Dr. Stegomena Tex to answer that question in terms of how do we achieve technology and innovation for gender equality? Any of our speakers can come in. Thank you. Um, Madam Nono, are you coming in on that question? Oh. Hey. Oh. Valerie, come on, Valerie. Okay, we're going to come back to that question. Um, uh, Ms. Zotiti, we have noted it with thanks. We will ensure that it is answered by all means. Now, Meme, do we have any other um, person that would like to, you know, call for the support of women programs that you see in the audience? Uh, yes, this is Pumela. We have Ricky Menyuka who would like to make an input. Okay, over to you, Ricky. Um, good afternoon, everyone, and good afternoon to the esteemed panel. It's such an honor to be in such a, um, an eventful and inspiring discussion of African women um, and to be amongst women who are doing the work at all different levels. I uh, just wanted to take this opportunity to say that a lot of the work that has to be done is not just amongst multilaterals, but there's so much work that needs to be done at community level with business and corporates and uh, to really encourage all of us who are on this platform, all of us who are doing the work across the continent as Binti to work together to ensure that as a society, we combine and do all the work necessary to ensure that gender equality becomes a reality. Uh, I'm driving off um, the initial input by, um, by, by former UN commissioner, um, Pumzile Mlamo Mnuka, that we still have so much work to do and really to continue to build on the amazing legacy that she has left us with at that organization, a legacy that was seeing the work done in all sectors of society and not just amongst multilateral institutions. That's it from me. Thank you. Wow, thank you very much for that. Very, very insightful. Thank you for um, you know, raising your hand and addressing that matter. So let's move on with the program and um, play a video that really summarizes what Women's Month is about. Let us have that video. Ladies and gentlemen, is a summary um, of what Women's Month is about, acknowledging the matriarchs that came before us in this country. And we would also like to take this opportunity uh, to thank our women powerhouses, Dr. Pumzile Mlambonguga and Dr. Stegomena Tex, who both served two terms each in, in, in the most powerful organizations in the world and Africa as it were, which is the United Nations and SADC. The fact that they were re-elected to serve after their first terms ended demonstrates their tenacity and the contribution and the passion that they have for women's issues. So we congratulate you, uh, Dr. Tex. We congratulate you, Dr. Mlambo Nunga.
for having raised the flag for women globally. Now, without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, let us introduce to you our host for today, the Director General of Government Communication and Information Systems, which is GCIS, and she's also the spokesperson of the Cabinet of South Africa. Her name is DG Pumla Williams. She's the Director General of the GCIS and is mentioned the cabinet spokesperson of the Republic of South Africa. Prior being appointed in, in the current positions, DG Pumla Williams was the deputy CEO in 2019. DG Williams served as director of finance and later as chief financial officer of GCIS between 1998 and 2009. She worked in the African National Congress before joining government in 1995. And she was based in Swaziland and Mozambique during the 1980s. DG Williams during her time visited a number of countries performing African National Congress duties. She holds a master's in public administration from the University of South Africa. Her additional qualifications include a certificate in public sector finance from the University of Stellenbosch. Ms. Williams' 17 years work experience in both provincial and national government, as well as various local and international NGOs has provided her with an extensive experience in governance issues in the public service. We welcome you, DG over to you for your remarks. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Salele, our program director. Let me start all by, by acknowledging and also appreciating our panelists. Dr. Mlambo Nuka, Dr. Tex, Ms. Valerie Msoka, Ms. Dihemo, I hope I'm pronouncing the right name. So before I move on to thank the two and Dr. Mlambo Nuka, uh, I think we appreciate flying the flag. When we conceptualize this webinar and we, we coined it as Africa's webinar on informing, empowering women and enhancing gender equality. Hello. Chairperson, am I audible? DG, may I please ask you to repeat? You are audible now. However, there was a slight disturbance in the technology. May I ask if the DG could start again, if you don't mind?
Welcome. Thank, thank you very much. Can you hear me? Yes, DG, it is perfect. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm really sorry with the technology and the network. But as, as I was saying that when we conceptualize this webinar, which uh, follows a number of webinars or, or engagements that we have held on a women's month, because I think these dialogues, as we coined them, is to celebrate some of the successes that we have made, but also to appreciate the challenges ahead. And this webinar has afforded us an opportunity to get an information and to also learn from other stories in the continent, because for as long as this journey of empowering women is not kept to South Africa alone, it is a journey that all of us as women and as citizens of this continent have a responsibility from learning from each other, from empowering each other, from learning from each other. And today I, I, I leave this webinar fully empowered and almost saying when we go back as the government communication, we will be going back with some of the stories that we have learned. I'm appreciating the BT Africa Connect. It is an amazing platform that we did not know about it, but it is a platform that we will begin to learn because I think as South Africa, we, 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 we have no illusion that the challenges that are facing South African women are still huge and we have to pull all the stops from learning each other. I, I mean, I can't even mention the, the challenges that are faced by our rural women the challenges that we still have of 
harnessing the girl child in this country because some of the solution that we seek to do is to make sure that people who come after us don't have to face the challenges of the safety, of justice, of inequalities. And once we forge ahead with what we are do doing as a country now, but I think we need not forget what we need to do. I, I appreciated one of the speakers speaking about, you cannot win this battle if you don't take men along, because we also believe that there is a space for those good men who can be advocates of what we need to do. So as I, I really conclude is to say that we have achieved what we wanted to achieve. We have benefited from the pan panelists. The inputs that we have recorded is input that we will want to go back and see how we amplify it going forward. But I think we have also opened an opportunity that these dialogues should not be dialogues that only happen in August. These are dialogues that should be part of our journey of empowering women to take their position in making sure that they, they change their lives. So with those few words, I'd like to thank the panelists once again, and also to thank the organizers, to thank the program directors. Thank you very much. I think also to thank the people who logged in and participated in this webinar for Africa, for Africans. Thank you very much. We thank you, DG, for being the visionary behind this work and for creating the platform for us to be able to meet today. Thank you, DG, for sharing South Africa's interest in making sure that information is shared and that there is learning from other stories within the African continent. Uh, DG, you have alluded to the need for us to learn from each other and for us to empower each other as women. And you have made that clarion call that this dialogue must not end today. And I think if we take anything away from today, that should be our key takeaway that this conversation, this dialogue on women's issues, on women's empowerment, on gender parity should not stop during Women's Month. That is what DG Pumla Williams has shared with us, ladies and gentlemen. So as we draw uh, this program to uh, its conclusion, allow me to thank each and every speaker that has joined us today, um, Dr. Pumzile Mlambo Nyoga, Dr. Stegomena Tex, Madam Valerie Denego Siam Soka, Madam Babatlaro Nono Dihemo, our host DG Pumla Williams. Allow me, ladies and gentlemen, to also mention the respective officials within GCIS who have made today a success. Mr. Ayanda Holo, whom I call a progressive man because he supports women's causes, Ms. Meme Mukhozi. Ms. Mpo Sechapola and Mr. Neba Gaula. That is the dream team behind this um, webinar today, headed by the DG Pumla Williams. So as we draw uh, this program to a conclusion, allow me to share what Mama Charlotte Manyamakege, who we are celebrating this year, who's a woman of first and who's a liberation icon. She once said, this work is not for yourselves. Kill that spirit of self and do not live above your people, but live with them. And if you can rise, bring someone with you. And from an inspiration point of view, allow me to conclude by sharing with you a poem that Tatu Nelson Mandela used to like which has become my favorite poem that drives me in life. And I hope that you will also take something from this poem. The poem is called A Return to Love by Marianne Williamson. It goes, our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light and not our darkness that frightens us the most. We ask ourselves, who am I to be gorgeous, talented, fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? 
You are a child of God. Your playing small does not serve the world. There is nothing enlightening about shrinking so that other people will not feel insecure around you. We are all meant to shine as children do. We were born to make manifest the glory of God that is within us. It is not just in some of us, it is in everyone. And as we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give others permission to do the same. And as we are liberated from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates others. Thank you, thank you, thank you for joining us. kana ile kitu kwa kupatia baiskeli nipatua baiskeli uh, 20 kwa maana kwamba wasichana 20 walipokea baiskeli niseme baiskeli hizi zimekuwa ni msaada mkubwa sana kwa wanafunzi kwa kupata hizi baiskeli kwa kweli imetusaidia kwa sababu uchelewaji wa wanafunzi ulikuwa ni kwa kiasi kikubwa lakini baada ya kupata hizi baiskeli basi angalau imewasaidia wanaweza kuwahi shule saa moja kamili wanafunzi hao wameshafika shule ukilinganisha na pale awali ambapo ulikuwa unamkuta msichana anafika shule kwenye saa tatu. Kwa nini unafika pale? Zaka mwalimu nikashafika darasani. Yaani kipindi za kwa umekikosa kabisa. Utoro pia umepungua. Zamani alikuwa ni watoro kwa sababu mtoto anakuwa anachoka kirudi, kachoka kwa siku anaweza kama siku ya pili kwamba anabakia. Maana unafikiria ni kipindi kwa mguu. Wafikiria mu wiki nzima kwenda na kurudi ni umbali na maana unakuwa umechoka na maana za kusingiza hata nyumbani waumwa lakini kumbe huumwe ila tunile uchovu wa kwenda na kurudi kila siku. Kwa hiyo baada ya kupata baskeli utoro umepunguza. Nashukuru. Si pia kuwa inamba na wai. Wakati mwalimu mimi nikiendaga na kukuta darasani mpaka ania sasa hivi, sasa mwalimu mimi ndo anakuta darasani. Kwa hiyo nashukuru taaluma yangu imepanda kimasomo na hata kuzuria shule niko vizuri. Mahudhurio yao sasa hivi yamekuwa kwa kiasi kikubwa sana. Kwa maana kwamba baskeli zinawawezesha kutoka nyumbani kuja shuleni katika kipindi chote cha shule na hata walimu wanapowahitaji kuja shuleni kwa siku ambazo sio za shule. A, lakini swala jingine ni swala la kitaaluma. Nilijaribu kupitia a, kuanzia matokeo yao ya mwaka jana kabla hawajapata baiskeli na mwaka huu mara walipopata baiskeli kwa kiasi fulani kwa asilimia kubwa a, kwa idadi yao wote wao vijana matokeo yao kidogo yameongezeka. Toka alipopata hii baskeli, nashukuru maendeleo yake sasa hivi yamekuwa mazuri. 
shule anaenda kwa wakati hata wa, nani bidii yake pale shule pia inajionyesha inakuwa ni nzuri sio sawa na pale alipokuwa anaenda kwa miguu kwa sababu ajua hapa mpaka sekondari unachoka sana mwendo kwa hiyo niseme kwa kupitia mradi huu wa msichana initiative kwa kweli wanafunzi wetu wameweza eh, kunufaika huu mradi umesaidia sana kwa kiasi kikubwa kwanza kabisa tulikuwa tunapata changamoto nakuta mtoto anachelewa kipindi kile cha kwanza na cha pili kwa hiyo kwa wiki unaweza kukuta anakuja Jumatatu Jumatano na Ijumaa siku nyingine anajipa off ya mwenyewe kwa sababu walikuwa wakitoka shule kama hawana baisikeli kuna sehemu tunaita kibao cha shule barabarani kule walikuwa wanafika pale wanakaa wanasubiri boda boda ambaye anapita kwa mfano wanaomba lift yule akiomba lift ndio anamwezesha kufikisha nyumbani huko anakoenda sasa wakati anaenda nyumbani hatujui ni, ni kitu gani ambacho kilikuwa kinatendeka hapo katikati lakini baada ya kupata hizi baisikeli wanakuja nazo na wanarudi nazo nyumbani kwa wakati nilipopata baisikeli nikitoka shuleni tu mmoja kwa moja mpaka nyumbani inakuwa sichoki kama nilivyokuwa nachoka zamani kipindi nipo kwa miguu tokea hivyo apate baskeli sijaletewa malalamiko kama binti wangu anachelewa shule baada ya huu mradi kuja watoto kubahatika kupata hizi baskeli wanawahi mapema baskeli imenirahisishia kufika shule mapema na kuwahi vipindi vya asubuhi ambavyo nilivyokuwa na vikosa kuwahi namba saa 12 na nusu kwa na wai vile vipindi vya kwanza na vya pili. Kiasi kwamba hata ule usumbufu kwa walimu darasani au kupata zile adhabu za kuchelewa wanakuwa hawapati sasa hivi. Imepelekea kupata ufaulu wa juu kutokana kutoka ule wa chini kuelekea juu kwa sababu zamani nilikuwa baadhi ya vipindi na vikosa lakini sasa hivi na vipata nimepata ufaulu mzuri. Mimi na shauri huu mradi uendelee kuwasaidia wa wasichana kwamba kuna baadhi wengine huko kuna kidato cha kwanza ambao wameingia mwaka huu nao wanatokea mbali vile vile. Kwa mradi uendelee na uendelee kutoa msaada zaidi. Nimepata furaha kwanza nimeona ni mtoto wa kike ambaye nimejaliwa. Yaani nime, nimepatiwa kama vile nimepatiwa haki yangu na umuhimu wa kupata elimu. Pia ime, yani imenipa furaha naweza nikafikia katika malengo yangu. Uh, mradi wa baskeli moja msichana mmoja ni mradi ambao shirika letu la msichana initiative limekuwa linauendesha tangu tulipoanza mwaka 2016. Mradi huu wa baskeli moja msichana mmoja umekuwa ni nyenzo muhimu sana kuhakikisha kwamba tunachangia katika jitihada za kutokomeza masuala ya ukatili wasichana wengi kujikuta wanaingia kwenye matatizo kama ya utoro, uh, mimba za utotoni hasa mba wanakuwa wanatafuta usafiri wa kuafikisha shuleni au wa kuwarudisha nyumbani. Tunafahamu vile vile kutokana na utafiti wa masuala ya ukatili kwa watoto uliofanyika mwaka 2011 na shirika la UNICEF unaonesha kuwa takriban uh, msichana mmoja kati ya wasichana watatu ameshapitia vitendo vya ukatili wa kingono kabla ya kutimiza miaka 18 na asilimia sabina mbili ya wasichana wameshapitia ukatili wa kimwili. Kwa hiyo mradi huu hasa umelenga kuhakikisha kwamba tunaweza kuwasaidia wasichana na kifaa ambacho kitaweza kuwasaidia kufika haraka shuleni na tunawahamasisha wasichana kuendelea kubaki shule na kupinga ukatili ambao unawafanya mara zote uh, waingie katika changamoto ambazo nimezitaja kama ya za ndoa za utotoni, mimba za utotoni na vitendo vya ubakaji. Tunajivunia sana mradi huu wa basili moja msichana mmoja kwa sababu ni mradi ambao kwa asilimia mia moja unafadhiliwa na Watanzania wenyewe. Watanzania kupitia michango yao midogo midogo kuanzia shilingi moja wamekuwa wanachangia kupitia shirika letu na sisi kuhakikisha fedha hizi zinafikia wasichana kwa kuwapatia vifaa vya baskeli. Kwa hiyo ningependa pia kukuhamasisha kama unatamani pia kushiriki katika kampeni hii ya baskeli moja msichana mmoja ni rahisi sana 
sisi tunasema kwa kila msichana mmoja ni laki moja na nusu tu lakini hiyo utakiwa kuchangia peke yako kama unaweza kuchangia baskeli moja tunashukuru kama unaweza kuchangia baskeli zaidi ya moja tutashukuru pia lakini hata kama una moja usisite tuchangie kupitia namba yetu utakayoona hapo chini kwenye screen ili tuweze kuwasaidia wasichana wengi wa Tanzania na kutoka mikoa mbalimbali waendelee kupata fursa ya kupata elimu tunasema wangea wangea